Hey there everyone, how's it going? Welcome to your midterm week. I wanted to give you a little bit of a review lecture just to try to pull together a lot of the concepts that we've covered in most of these mini lectures um, because a lot of the concepts are truly interrelated and even though we look at each individual component separately, they really do fit together and I hope that once you're done this lecture that a lot of the concepts that we've previously discussed seem a lot more connected and hopefully feel a little bit more ingrained um, into your memory. So uh, it, at first it might seem uh, a little bit, um, I want to say, uh, all over the place, but ultimately what I'm doing is trying to tie together most of the concepts that we've covered thus far. Okay, let's uh, dive into this. So. If we think about um, exercise in general and what we've learned, kind of starting with the bioenergetics components, we get a sense that we have uh, two primary systems, right? We have our anaerobic and our aerobic systems, right? So let's go, let's just say anaerobic and aerobic here, okay? Actually, I even want to do different colors. Okay, so speaking about our anaerobic system, the way it primarily works, if we recall, is through our phosphocreatine system and glycolysis, right? This is where what gives us our energy. So if we kind of use our little connecting lines here to help build a web or a bit of a mind map here, we have our ATP, PC, and um, I think I want to put this more in the middle. Lysis. Okay. All right. So these are our two main energy systems within our anaerobic system. And if we want to think of activities for these things, we can think of like 100 meter sprints, um, you know, weightlifting, all we'll kind of. Our classic, that's supposed to be a dumbbell. <laughs> Don't worry, the, the art is not going to get any better here, so uh, sit tight. And let's just say a 100 meter uh, run, just to give us a bit of a, a memory jar whenever we're looking at that. So we have these two systems, they produce energy. All right, and if, with the other thing that we know about this is the duration, right? This is usually from about zero to 10 seconds. This is anywhere from 10 to, let's say about 30 seconds, but we know it can still be heavily involved up to maybe, depending on how well the system's developed, 90 seconds, so heavily relied on up to 90, okay? But I think this is uh, the easier top end time limits to think of for the system, okay? So when we're looking at our activities and where ATP comes from, again, for our anaerobic systems, it's ATP, phosphocreatine, and the gly glycolytic, okay? We got a good sense of activities, but the other part that we also speak to about these activities is the intensity of the activity, right? So we know that when we're looking at the ATP PC system and the glycolytic system, our activities for anaerobic tend to be higher intensity, right? So with this higher intensity, we also have a greater amount of force being produced, but because of that, we know there's a shorter amount of time. So if we wanna tie in our skeletal muscle here at this point in time, we can say high force, okay, for both of these systems, right? With the highest force production that we can possibly immediately do coming from, uh, let's say, this end of the spectrum with ATP PC, okay? So high force, uh, and when we're talking about high force in our skeletal muscles, we're of course talking about type two muscle fibers, right? So when we're talking about that, we have our, uh, let's go here, uh, uh, let's put both here uh, for now. So we're gonna go just very general type two for now, okay? 
on that. So again, when we're thinking anaerobic, we're thinking type two muscle fibers. Okay, great. Again, that gives us high force, short duration. Okay. Great. One of the other components that we can add into all of this now is when we come to food. Okay, so something else that we thought about when we're talking about our anaerobic system is the macronutrients or as we called it the metabolic substrate that we typically use for these systems okay and if you recall one of the input um, let's go down here one of the inputs that we put into glycolysis to help create energy is carbohydrates in particular right? carbs Prime you know, to be even more specific, what type of carbs? Sugars are most specifically glucose. Okay. It's a really important one there. Okay. Glucose. Yum. Delicious. Okay. So from carbs, we run glycolysis, which is an important part of our anaerobic respiration, which uh, primarily relies on our type 2 muscle fibers to produce high force. They're also, uh, how do I want to say this? Uh, fatigable. Sure. Okay. Um, and the reason for all of this is we don't have, uh, well, no, I don't want to say that. Okay. So we have anaerobic, our anaerobic system. We have ATP, PC, primarily sitting in the muscle uh, cytoplasm, so just in the cell. I think location is important to think of as well. Okay, so it's just this kind of free-floating, ready-to-be-accessed kind of energy. And again, that gets used up right away in 10 seconds. Then, in a bit of a, a gradient fashion, um, as time continues on and demand for work continues, we start looking to our glycolytic system. So we have glycolysis going, it's using carbs, it's using uh, glucose in order to uh, produce ATP. If you recall, we need some ATP put in in order to get ATP back. And if we're gonna say that, um, I'm going to try to make this a hexagon as best as I can. So we're going to say glucose is uh, one input. The other thing to remember is that we also have glycogen within the muscle, right? So if we have these chains of oh. okay, so again we got our glycogen, which is just multiple chains of glucose linked together what we'll find is yeah that atp or we can pull from this from glycolysis as well and if you recall it requires one less atp than if we we're just to purely start using glucose okay and uh, that's uh, largely because we already have it in the muscle ready to go okay uh right so we've spoken about that side of our our energy producing systems. Let's take a look at our aerobic system now, okay? So when we're speaking about aerobic energy production as far as our ATP, our bio, bioenergetic systems are our Krebs and also our electron transport chain, okay? Now, one of the important things to recall from here is when there is the presence of enough oxygen within the cell, um, what we'll do is we'll take one of the um, uh, end products of glycolysis, so pyruvate. Uh, it's already getting cluttered, but that's okay. Let's go like this. We're going to zoop down there and show that we have a couple of options here, okay? Pyruvate, OK? 
good. So one of the things that will happen is if there's no oxygen, okay, what happens is we have lactate dehydrogenase create lactate in the cell. So again, that's no O2, no oxygen. Okay, but if we do have enough oxygen present, what do we get from pyruvate? Well, it gets converted. Ah, I'm gonna pick a different color, sorry folks. We're gonna get acetyl-CoA. Sorry, it's already getting squishy, okay? Now this is just a two carbon sort of uh, precursor or, or mediary, mediary uh, heading into our aerobic. Okay, so again, I want to be really clear. This is when O2 is present. Okay, so from here, now we can start getting into our first conversion, uh, which allows some citrate or citric acid to be uh, created and we undergo Krebs, okay? So in this Krebs cycle, we get to spin off some ATP, um, not much, and some uh, NAD, if you recall, which are the transporters for hydrogen protons. Just this is an important component to have. Let's give hydrogen a fun orange color. So again, Krebs will spit off amongst a small amount of ATP, some NAD and FAD. And those are our Ubers or our taxi cabs to bring hydrogen protons onto the next stage for us. We do get an ATP there as well, okay? So, uh, but what's, what's important here is not so much the ATP we get directly from Krebs, although we get a good deal from it, is some of these hydrogen protons that get brought over to you here. And so this is a good point in time to remind ourselves that the aerobic component, uh, the enzymes involved, the... Um, coenzymes and, uh, uh, sorry, the uh, um, pumps that sit within the, the membrane, uh, within a muscle cell, this is all happening in the mitochondria. That's what I'm trying to get to. So if we, we'll just give a nice big old picture of the mitochondria. And if you recall, there's multiple walls here. That's gonna, not going to work on my diagram, but um, we have kind of a membrane inside the membrane of the of the mitochondria right and so what happens with these protons again let me draw that a bit clearer for you we have these hydrogen protons that are pumped up into a gradient system so they're moved into this area where there's a high concentration of hydrogen protons and anytime in biology when we have a really high concentration of something it typically wants to flow down or migrate to where there's less of it um, to, to establish equilibrium, okay? So with these hydrogen protons that are created and shuttled over with Ubers and these taxi cabs of NAD and FAD, um, we get this uh, electron, electron transport chain moving these hydrogens, moving electrons through this membrane process till we get to uh, the the final stage of the um, what example do I want to use the uh, turbine the turbine okay so a turbine there's this big wheel where the hydrogen protons are kind of traveling along and they're gonna go through this this uh, pump okay sorry about that interruption so with uh, where was I right so we're talking about aerobic respiration, oxidative uh, respir respiration. We, we have these redox reactions that occur um, within the mitochondria, which we're looking at here in our, our pink bubble. It was hyd hydrogen protons shuttle over, we get this gradient built up. The electron transport chain 
transfers electrons as well as these hydrogens across this gradient. In particular, uh, we we're last talking about this turbine component. And the turbine uh, is called ATP synthase. And that's a really, really important part because we get so much of our ATP churned out through this gradient, right? This is ATP, ATP. You know, ultimately, all together, we get, um, you know, if we're, we're talking about numbers of ATP, you know, depending where our source is for glycolysis, we get a net, oh, I should keep it all the same color, sorry. Um, two ATP netted here. Let's just do a whole summary over on this side for aerobic. So between Krebs and ETC, we get roughly about 33 ATP. Okay, there's some numbers. There's actually quite a bit of debate in and around what we typically would call how much ATP we get from that process uh, from aerobic uh, oxidation. Uh, yeah, but we'll for we'll just call it 33. <laughs> Okay. Um, right. So again, we have uh, this uh, aerobic respiration again when oxygen is present. We can undergo this state. And the really important part about that to understand is right here at the very end. Uh, let's use pink for this so it's bright. With all these hydrogens, what happens at the very end because of oxygen? Well, we can get some of these hydrogens joining on, and we end up getting a couple of waters out of it. Okay. Well, because there's two oxygens here, um, it ends up uh, we get um, H2O, but because there's again two O's there, we get a couple of water. Okay. But the the real important thing is to acknowledge and uh, remember that oxygen acts as a proton and electron receptor okay without oxygen present we can't have aerobic respiration we don't have an endpoint or an end collector for the electron transport chain therefore we get a buildup of lactate and again that's in scenarios with no oxygen no oxygen present we're not enough to act as receptors, okay? Okay, so that's a little bit of the, the actual bioenergetics as far as how we get ATP, but let's also talk about a few more things here regarding under, other concepts. So when we go undergo this, it's anything that is, of course, 30 seconds plus as far as its duration, right? So exercises that, say, are very slow and easy um, let's say a, a cycle or uh, what else can we do really easy? Maybe a leisurely stroll like walking or perhaps what you're doing right now, like sitting at a desk. Okay. So all of these things uh, are 30 seconds longer in duration, but they are also, um, gonna, yeah, we'll keep same color. So over here, um, it's low force and fatigue uh, resistant, okay? All right, so when we have activities that are low force, fatigue resistant, so something that we do for a very, very long time without needing too great of uh, a force production, we're talking about having uh, utilizing our type one, that I is a one, muscle fibers, okay? So again, anything that we need to do for a very long time, low intensity, type one muscle fibers. Okay, and again, partly, I'll see if I can make this color a little bit better. If we think about it, we're getting 33 ATP. Okay, we're breathing in enough oxygen that our energy needs can be met purely through 
aerobic respiration. Okay, it's in the times or the moments where we need to utilize a lot of force. So these type two muscle fibers and create a surplus, an extra amount of energy that can't be met by our aerobic system that we then go into anaerobic activity. Okay, okay, good. One of the things that uh, I didn't mention there would be what sort of fuel, what sort of foods are we using? So carbs goes into glycolysis. One of the great or amazing things about Krebs cycle is we have, so kind of indirectly, we can look at it this way, carbs go into glycolysis and then as one of its results will produce pyruvate and then therefore feed into Krebs. I hope this is not getting too messy. I'll, we'll, we'll keep compiling here in our, our, our thought web. Um, We'll clear page if we need to. So in one, so one, one uh, metabolic substrate that can feed into aerobic system is glucose, but we can have another one doo, 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 that feeds into here. And that is what we commonly think of as supplying aerobic um, oxidative respiration or our aerobic system is fats. Okay, in particular are, uh, yeah, what's, uh, no, let's keep that. Okay, so in particular triglycerides or the fatty acid component of triglycerides, right? Kind of remember a picture sort of like this. This is our glycerol, glycerol component and then we have one, two, three, fatty acids and if you remember for a moment our fatty acids are long kind of uh, hydrocarbon chains that we can break up in order to get us our two carbon um, length chains of uh, precursor for acetyl-CoA that feeds into Krebs and uh, yeah essentially we chop off these uh, tails if you will of the triglycerides. triglycerides. Okay, sorry that's got messy there. Okay, so fatty acids can feed into that. Okay, and then not spoken about too much by us in, in this particular course, but uh, a reminder that proteins can also feed in at this point too. Okay, but it doesn't happen very often. Um, proteins can also go into uh, our Krebs cycle. There's a bit more of a different process for that. But that's how we can, yeah, use our, our aerobic system for, or how we get our metabolic substrates for, for our oxidative respiration. Great, so before we get rid of all of this, uh, one thing that I want to chat about is how training will affect or cause adaptations to these systems, right? So in particular, let's look at our anaerobic first and then we'll look at our aerobic. So when we undergo anaerobic activities, one of the things that we'll see is in, uh, in training, and maybe I should even step back and explain what some of the training for this looks like. So if we're talking about weightlifting or resistance training, I think that's pretty straightforward. You know, you, like, you lift a set of weights, you take a break and repeat. And typically, um, you know, if it if we think that it's going to take just 10 seconds, you know, if we want to push into a bit more glycolytic, um, up to 30 seconds, that's our standard set of about anywhere from six to or five to 10 repetitions, depending on what we're lifting and how we're lifting. Um, and so that's where that comes from. You know, we produce a lot of force, we deplete our ATP PC system, we, we um, kind of exhaust the energy that we can get through without needing oxygen yet through the glycolytic system. And 
through that, and again, primarily if we're talking about weightlifting, we're talking the, about the ATP PC system, is um, uh, we need uh, recovery time. Okay, so we'll, we'll expend some uh, our uh, available ATP PC that's just floating around in the uh, uh, muscle cytosol or the um, uh, sarcosol, which is the the fluid or the um, yeah the fluid within within a cell right inside a muscle cell is uh, so we'll work for say 10 seconds but then we rest and recover for about you know depending on what we're doing about 90 seconds okay so we have this 90 seconds recovery and then we repeat some strain after this uh, has had a chance to recharge or repopulate the the cell okay now you do that enough, you put enough fatigue on that system. The way our bodies, this is a really, really good point actually, if you're like watching, half doing something else, stop, pause, listen to this. A really important part to understand about exercise and how training causes physiological adaptations to our body is truly, we'll come back to that, don't worry, is if we have something that looks like this, and let's say, this is um, capacity of, or a system, system's capacity. And I'll, I'll explain that a bit more in a minute. And this is time. And so what will happen is as we exercise, um, let's just say this is our starting capacity. And, okay. So if this is our baseline capacity here for, let's say, muscular strength, okay, again, keeping it a bit uh, ambiguous, but again, for system capacity, we could say uh, anaerobic um, uh, ATP PC system or our glycolytic system, okay, so some uh, body system capacity. We say this is what it is. If we tax it, if we strain it, if we put fatigue into it, again, if we're thinking about um, ATP PC system. So we really deplete, tax and strain the amount, okay? How do we do that? How do we cause our system capacity to decrease? How do we put strain or stress on a particular system? Well, we train it, we exercise, okay? So this is our exercise here, good. So this we're causing actually, we're breaking the body down in some way, we're putting strain we're putting it through a tough time again either breaking the muscles down through muscular work uh, say such as weightlifting or you know again it's energy system so we're really depleting the atp pc system of its available energy okay so we do that but what happens over time is we see this increase in capacity to about here Okay, so what did we say this line was again? This was our baseline or our starting uh, position as far as uh, our ATP PC system. Okay, but now all of a sudden, whoa, we're way above the line. What's happened between here and here? Well, perhaps not surprisingly, that was our rest period. So during rest, that's when we recover. During that recovery, is the actual time that we get stronger than we were before above baseline okay but then what again what happens over time well maybe you didn't work out and so you detrain a little okay but maybe not too much all right so this is our original baseline let's talk about our new baseline being somewhere along in here okay so what happens again? Well, we go for another bout of exercise. We strain that body. Again, we drive its capacity down, we fatigue it out, we wear it down, only to, after that exercise, rest and recover and reach a new plateau, okay? So here's our rest, things come up. And now here is where we actually got stronger, right in there, okay? So that's cool. That's the idea behind, you know, how, um, you know, when you get really tired, your muscles get sore, you get fatigued when you exercise. It's a little challenging. We put stress and you really truly do put strain on your body. But this is how, again, as a net benefit, 
we get stronger when we exercise. Cool, huh? Okay, really important to have the rest in between. We'll, we'll turn to this uh, concept a bit later, but I feel that's a good context to and a good framework to have working forward here. So when we talk about our ATP PC system here, doing a set, working out, letting some recovery time. Now within a workout session, those 90 seconds just allow a little bit of immediate replenishment of energy. So again, we can lift a little heavier again, okay? It's not long term. So uh, that's how we do that. Now let's talk about the glycolytic system. Oh, sorry, and some of the benefits of that would be, before we move forward too far, uh, would be increased storage of our uh, intramuscular uh, glucose plus a little bit of extra phosphocreatine floating around waiting for ATP to uh, be able to be stored with it, right? And Or, um, yeah, in the high, high energy phos uh, phosphate bonds that we have with ATP, okay? We train our glycolytic system. What tends to happen is we get an increase, yes, of intramuscular uh, glycogen. Oh, I didn't write that down. Glycogen. But we also get an increase in the enzymes uh, responsible for glycolysis. Again, this kind of happens in or around the cell. Um, isn't, isn't housed in any particular organelle. And so the more enzymes that float around, the more anaerobically we can produce some ATP and precursors for Krebs, right? Okay. Again, interval work, very high efforts to ensure that we are actually taxing the uh, glycolytic and ATP PC system, wearing that down a bit, and allowing some recovery. If we were to just purely go out and go for a very, very hard effort, I think what we'd see in our effort over time, um, and time, we'd see our intensity. So say we start running as hard as we can, we'd reach a certain effort level. Um, maybe I should even change effort level to output or speed, let's say. So if you're running really, really fast, hard as you can you know we know it's like sure 10 seconds in not a problem you hit 30 seconds probably still great but your speed over time will decrease until it starts to hit a plateau okay and so this is your anaerobic system wearing down and getting too tired and this is kind of the plateau of where your aerobic system can continue to maintain some effort okay so in the context of glycolysis what are we looking for when we're training it? Well, typically you want to be able to do repeated bouts here. Repeated bouts within those 30 seconds and hit that effort level there. So for example, um, that's why you just don't go out and run as hard as you can as long as you can because we wouldn't be able to hit the same speed because we'd end up just hitting this aerobic. And that's why the recovery time, what was recovery, I forget. So the rest, in between repeated intervals every time helps us get back to zero recharge our ATP that we need in order to produce an effort that high okay great so intervals high intensity work very important for ATP and gly glycolytic systems let's talk about uh, our aerobic system a little bit here do, do, do. where are we at um, yeah, and so some of the adaptations that we'll see about this tend to be for and related to oxygen and oxygen delivery. So two ways. One, uh, we have an increase in O2 flowing to, oh my goodness, that was supposed to be an arrow. That was terrible. Okay, let's try that again. Boom. Okay. O2 from your lungs into your blood, from your blood into your muscles, and from that point in your muscles into your cells, into your mitochondria, okay? So what does that look like? Well, the way we can do that is through our capillaries in our blood. 
we primarily get an increase in those. We also get an, an increase in everything to do with aerobic uh, organelleness. Okay, so we get an increase in the number of mitochondria that we, is present within the cell, uh, within the muscle. Uh, the cell, the mitochondria themselves get bigger in size. Okay, so they just expand out, and a lot of that is to increase the number of, um, how do I want to put this, of uh, enzymes, let's say, and the components that help with electron, electron transport chain go through their redox reactions, okay? So again, the two main ways that you can probably summarize this or pull this together in your mind as far as the adaptations are increased in capillaries so the the amount of blood vessels or vasculature that reaches the muscles and then on the other hand we have the mitochondria so it increases in number they increase in size because everything in them has increased as well like the uh, enzymes uh, related to Krebs and the electron transport chain um, system has increased in number as well okay so what did we review so far in the slide? Well, we spoke about bioenergetics. We spoke about metabolic substrates that feed into these systems. We took, spoke about the skeletal muscle types that are involved in either of these systems briefly. And we spoke about um, what sort of training uh, effects that we might come to, to know or, or might be a result from from training any of these systems, okay? Great. Well, hopefully that uh, helped you, you got something out of that, and hopefully pulled together a lot of concepts that we've covered over this unit. Um, one of the things that I hope maybe you can do for yourselves is, maybe not verbatim retell this entire lecture, but be able to, on your own or with a study buddy, go through and try to create these these concept webs for yourselves and uh, you know the expectation is at some point in time you're going to come up across some information where you might not know the answer and that's good because that's an opportunity that you can go look up the answer or uh, yeah double check it either in your le lecture notes your uh, textbook uh, maybe a lecture but it'd probably be quicker to just use one of those other resources find your answer see how that fits in and integrates into the knowledge you already have, and then continue on trying to explain all those systems, okay? Great. Yeah, so uh, hope again, I really hope this helped set your studies up, and maybe if some of this sounded really new or really odd or, or unfamiliar, excellent place to start with your studies, and again, like I said, I hope everyone took something away from this. Great. Best of luck with your studies and best of luck with your exam.